My name is Len Reid and I'm the Vice President of Technology at FTI. This video is a, one of a series of explaining the technology that FTI has to increase the fatigue life, the repairability of aircraft structures and also improve in, in maintenance and, and manufacturing. The first in the series is going to talk about split sleeve cold expansion, a method to enhance the fatigue life of holes in aircraft structures. The objectives of the presentation, we're going to be talking about an overview of the split sleeve cold expansion process, explain how it's used to extend the fatigue life of holes in aircraft structures and improve the damage tolerance, also how you can save weight in aircraft structural design. We'll also then discuss some of the engineering attributes of the technology and how they can be used in your design in a unique application. Before we get into this, I think we need to describe what fatigue is. We all know that aircraft or fatigue of a metal structure usually occurs when a piece of structure is subjected to cyclic loading. So you apply a cyclic stress to it, over time you'll generate fatigue cracks. And that stress level doesn't have to exceed what we call the yield of the material. Just as long as you have enough cycles on the material, it'll typically generate a fatigue crack. The picture here on the right shows a typical fatigue crack that's occurred in a wing spar. It's a little bit difficult to see, but that is a fatigue crack going all the way through the spar in a titanium structure. Some of the main critical areas on aircraft structures is the wing. The lower surface of the wing where the skin attaches to the, the ribs or the stringers, they're attached typically using rivets or fasteners. All of those require drilling a hole. And holes are typically a stress concentration. And the stress concentration is where you apply the same stress, but now you've got an interruption, such as a hole, that will cause a, a concentration of that stress that will magnify the stresses, typically by a factor of three to one. The analogy I use is like a stream, where you have a stream of water flowing, and you drop a rock into the middle of that stream. You still have the same volume of water going through, but now you've got some, an obstruction in the centre where you have a concentration of those stresses. Those stresses will typically initiate a fatigue crack, particularly if there's a defect in the hole or some other, de uh, like a corrosion pit, fatigue crack, a score mark, uh, and as that crack tends to grow, we then magnify those tensile stresses and that will cause the crack to accelerate and cause a failure. I can show that by a, an animation, a video of a, a fatigue crack. Fatigue cracks don't typically grow this fast. This has been accelerated. Show that fatigue crack growing under a number of cyclic loads. It gets to a point where that crack reaches a critical crack length and the whole structure will break. People don't typically like aircraft structures breaking up in flight. So what can we do to uh, prevent fatigue cracks? Now in design, we can actually use more material. We can make it thicker because stress really is a function of the this local stress the load divided by the cross-sectional area. So if we make the structure thicker, we can actually reduce the stresses and extend the fatigue life. But that carries a weight penalty. Aircraft don't like to be heavy. We don't want heavy structures. We can't carry as many passengers. We can use stronger materials. We can use titanium alloy in lieu of, t of aluminum alloys. They're stronger. They'll carry more load and therefore increase the fatigue life of the structure. But they're typically more expensive, more difficult to manufacture. We can also reduce the stress levels. Uh, we need to, uh, as I said, make the, the structure thicker. Uh, that will reduce the stresses. But also actually blending any change or transition of cross-sectional area, you blend those out nice and smooth so you don't have little stress concentrations at those abrupt changes. Particularly re as you come to repairs of structures, and you may require to put a doubler on. That doubler will actually magnify the local stresses and actually accelerate possibly fatigue cracks in an adjacent area. We need to be also very careful when we're constructing. Uh, make sure you drill good quality holes. We don't want defects or scratches or scores because they will be stress concentrations that will cause a crack to grow. So that part of manufacturing, good quality control, making sure we have good fits and tolerances, a nice tight structure will enhance the fatigue life. The other way we can do that is we can actually pre-stress that critical area by inducing a residual stress that will actually shield it from the effect of the cyclic load you put on there. So therefore, prevent that any fatigue crack occurring at the defect you may have. In holes, we talk about hole cold expansion. 
And that's where we get into what this whole cold expansion is as a method to improve the fatigue life of the structure. Now I've just talked about holes typically the source of fatigue cracks. By using the split sleeve cold expansion method, we can induce a residual compressive stress around the hole that will shield it from those effective cyclic loads that it sees. We can view that, this is being actually viewed through a photoelastic material, uh, that's typically bonded to an aluminum structure, and then we can view it through a polarizer, we can see the strain that's been induced due to cold expansion. So by pre-stressing that, we're going to shield that hole from the effect of any cyclic loading that we might put on it. So what is the split sleeve cold expansion process? How do we achieve that in practice? Well, we use an expansion mandrel attached to some sort of hydraulic pulley unit and in combination with a lubricated split sleeve. Now, this is a typical expansion mandrel for a fairly large hole. We have a, an expansion portion on that mandrel and we also have the lubricated split sleeve. The sleeve has several functions. First of all, it's split so we can actually get it over the bulge part of the mandrel uh, and place it onto the, 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 the non-tapered section. That's placed into the pulley unit up against the nose cap. The sleeve also ensures that we have a one-sided process. Now we only need access to one side of a hole to cold expand it, but the sleeve will also protect the hole as we pull this expansion mandrel through. It's pre-lubricated on the inside so it reduces the amount of pull force or the effort to pull it through the hole. So we place those into the hole and then we keep the sleeve in place and then pull the expansion mandrel through the hole effectively yielding that hole and inducing a residual compressive stress. Now what we mean by yielding, if I take a typical spring and you've probably all done this yourself, you can take a spring and you can pull it apart and generally when you let it go it comes back to where it came from. That's if we stay within the elastic limit of the material. But when we cold expand it, we're going to exceed that elastic limit. So we're going to actually pull it, we're going to expand that hole and you put a permanent set in so when you let it go back again, it won't go back to where it came from. We have permanently deformed that hole and induced a residual compressive stress. Now we can see that by using a photoelastic, by, sorry, by using a, an animation of what the process is. And the steps of the process are fairly clear. First of all, we actually size the hole for the required amount of expansion we're going to put in and for the fastener we're going to put in afterwards. So we use a starting dr drill, a starting reamer, then to size that hole. And we can check the, the hole is the correct size. All the quality assurance tools are complete, included in the complete system of tools. So we have a starting hole gauge. It has a step on it. Typically it's about a 3,000 step. So we check to make sure it's the correct starting hole. We have the expansion mandrel, which is periodically checked for wear. That is then attached to a hydraulic pulley unit. We have a nose cap just to react the load, so it keeps the sleeve in place. There's the lubricated sleeve placed on the mandrel, placed in the hole from one side. And as we pull the expansion portion through the sleeve, we locally yield that material. After the mandrel goes through the hole, the material further away is still elastic and it springs back leaving it in a state of compression around the hole. We then check, we verify the hole is cold expanded, we remove that sleeve, it's only used once. Then we size the hole for the effective fastener we're going to install. If it's going to be left as a drain hole, there's no, we can eliminate that step, there's no need to size it afterwards. 